Today, I messed up by telling my dad that I, 20 male, have never had intercourse. A few days ago, I decided to visit my dad at his house. It was his birthday. I showed up with wine. We got a little drunk, maybe more than a little. When my dad was done going on and on about how much he missed my mom since she divorced him, he changed the subject and focused on my love life. He asked if I had a girlfriend and I said no. Then he asked if I ever had a girlfriend because he's never seen me with a girl. I said never. My dad poured the last drop of wine in my glass and asked if I was still a virgin. I was tempted to lie, but I paused too long, so I said yes. My dad said I had no reason to feel ashamed about my virginity, but encouraged me to do it as much as possible before I end up married to a person whose clam comes with an impenetrable encryption. I ignored the obvious reference to my mom's you-know-what and called it a night. I asked my dad if I was allowed to sleep in the spare bedroom because I didn't want to drive home drunk. I must have been sleeping for less than an hour before I woke up to the sound of my dad knocking on the door. I don't remember what I mumbled as I opened my eyes, but the moment my dad heard my voice, he entered the room with another person. My dad introduced her by name but did the air quotes thing with his fingers to imply that it was a fake name. I could tell that my dad was still drunk. Exhibit A, he continued making air quote gestures, even when it was no longer necessary. Not gonna lie, I was still a little drunk too, but not drunk enough to disregard the weird fucking shit that was happening. Without giving me proper time to react, my dad quickly said the girl knew exactly what to do before closing the door on his way out. The girl did not know what to do. She did nothing other than awkwardly waiting for me to say something. I eventually asked her what was going on and she said that my dad hired her to sleep with me. I died of embarrassment, especially when the girl asked me to explain if I was on the zero experience or the some experience end of the virgin spectrum. Without thinking, I said I was gay. It was the first time I actually said it out loud. The girl sat down on the bed and asked if I was a top or bottom. I shrugged and said I didn't know yet. My face must have been so red at the moment. The girl said if I was willing to go shower, then she would basically be willing to motorboat my butt. To be honest, I considered it. However, the situation was way too weird for me to be completely comfortable doing something that sexual with someone I didn't know it at all. I said thank you but no thank you to the girl and apologized for my dad putting both of us in an awkward position. She said that she understood and for some reason thought it was necessary to mention that my dad was one of their regular customers. She made it clear for the record that she never had sex with my dad, but explained that some of her older co-workers at the escort service really enjoyed spending time with him. She said she can't wait to tell the other workers that she met me because apparently my dad loves to talk about his son with people that he pays to get intimate with. The girl had a severe case of motor mouth. When she finally stopped talking, I learned that my dad sleeps with sex workers who kind of look like my mom and that woman closing their eyes with too much food in their mouth and saying, mmm, turns them on. The girl apologized for abusing my good listening skills and asked if there was nothing that she could do for me. I said she could keep my sexuality between the two of us. She said her lips were sealed until it comes time to S the D. My dad was passed out in the living room when we approached the front door. I went back to bed when the girl was gone and eventually fell asleep. The following morning, I confronted my dad. I said I didn't appreciate what he did and made sure that he understood that he wasted his money because nothing happened. My dad was apologetic and promised never to cross that line again, no matter how much alcohol is involved. Despite his apology, the mood is still somewhat tense. I decided to break the tension by closing my eyes and saying, hmm, while eating breakfast. The look on my dad's face was priceless. I lost my appetite soon afterwards because I instantly regretted doing something that might arouse my father. I messed up by expecting an escort to keep what happened between us private. The inevitable happened. The escort my dad hired to terminate my virginity in the dead of the night did not keep her mouth shut. I know. I should have seen it coming. When I shared my original post, I was convinced that my dad didn't know I was gay. I never said anything to anyone about my sexuality, other than the escort who teamed up with my father to unexpectedly put me in a vulnerable position. My dad and I have been avoiding each other since that night. Not gonna lie, I was okay with that. We needed space. The words divorced dad, virgin son, and S worker should never be said in the same sentence. This morning, my dad showed up at my apartment, unusual but not surprising. He was courteous enough to call beforehand, asked if I was available, said he wanted to talk. I assumed he was still feeling bad about ambushing me with an escort and wanted to make sure that our relationship was intact. Little did I know, my dad's primary objective was to establish if his 20-year-old son was sexually attracted to other people's 20-year-old sons. As soon as my dad made himself at home in my living room, I said my roommate was at the gym. He dropped the following line, sharing an apartment with a guy who works out must be motivating. Slow clap, subtle as fuck my father. He didn't even need to wink at the camera. He asked me if my roommate had a girlfriend. I implied that he had girls come and go. My dad said that my roommate must be handsome to get so much attention. I shrugged and said, or he's paying for it. It was a joke, an uncomfortable joke based on my dad's disturbed expression. My dad said that he could explain the S workers and answer all my questions if I was prepared to listen. I said it was none of my business and he didn't owe me an explanation, but I did suggest that he at least consider therapy. He said that he was proud of the person I've become and promised to think about my suggestion. As wholesome as this moment was, the gay elephant was still in the room, so I awkwardly asked my dad if he recently communicated with the S worker he hired to sleep with me. He said no because he wanted to respect my privacy and avoid crossing that line again. Based on all the random references to my roommate's attractiveness, I was convinced my dad heard I was gay from one of the S workers, who heard it from the S worker with the motor mouth. We danced around the topic of my sexuality for a little bit longer because it was still a big moment despite all the weird shit that happened the last time my dad and I were under the same roof. I eventually came out and said it. Dad, I'm gay. My dad stood up and showed me that he was wearing socks with rainbow stripes to celebrate the news. He said it was a gift from the S workers. He had another pair of rainbow socks in his pocket, which he gave to me when we were done hugging. I suppose the outcome could have been worse. I'm 32 and my wife is 30. After five years of marriage, I felt like she had given me all that she had to offer. Now, please don't judge me for saying that. She just had a very low sex drive and I have a higher one. I figured opening our relationship would help out the marriage and help me get my needs met. She originally said no, but after I explained to her the benefits, she said yes after a few days of asking. We both seemed excited at the possibility of a threesome. 
Now, where the problem lies is my wife is bisexual. However, the only people she's been sleeping with have been men. When asked about this, she said that she only sleeps with people that she clicks with, and they just happen to be men. When I told her my feelings about this, she said it's only fair because I'm sleeping with other women. While true, it makes me wonder if she's truly bisexual. When I asked for her to also sleep with women or I'd want to close the marriage again, she rolled her eyes and said no. One of the guys I fear is trying to seriously date her. He brings her flowers and food, pays for her nails, and never acknowledges me when he's over. I feel like she's dismissing my feelings and I'm getting frustrated. I want to close our marriage again. How do I approach this? While true that I should have set the boundary beforehand, I assumed that she'd be with women so I wasn't upset about the possibility of men having sex with her. And why do I have no right to complain? She's still my wife and we're still married. My fiance, Kim, I have just learned is completely insane. She took some days off of work this week sick and avoided seeing most people in person. She claimed that she was feeling sick and just wanted to stay home alone. She's never given me any indication that she would lie about this in the six years that we've been together. No one in her family had any worries because she was a stable individual who would never do anything crazy. However, she got a face tattoo. She took three sick days from her work to recover from the fact that she got a face tattoo. She told no one of this plan beforehand. I have never in our time together been talked to about tattoos by Kim. She showed no indication that she was even interested in getting any. I was not even the first to learn. Her sister visited her because she got worried after Kim canceled meeting with her for lunch on her third day sick and got the grand reveal. She didn't tell anyone beforehand because she didn't want to be talked out of it and hid the results because the swelling and redness were so bad that we would react badly and not be able to understand the artistic meaning. Kim is Asian American. She got Japanese symbols going down her forehead and under her eye. I don't know the meaning of them. I don't really know if I care to know the meaning of them. Kim's parents are Japanese immigrants. According to her sister, who was nice enough to inform me of this whole debacle, this is a big no-no in Japanese culture. Tattoos have links to crime and are looked down upon. Her parents are beside themselves and that is a whole other set of drama I can't even begin to approach. Kim talked to me last night about it and acted offended and started to fight because I told her it was absolutely insane for her to do this. She works a public-facing job. She talks face-to-face -face with clients in the financial industry. The minute her boss finds out, the career that she went to school for will be over. She actually didn't consider her job or family or me at all and decided a long time ago she was going to express herself freely without any concerns. I'm worried about her right now. This is not normal. She blocked my number after our fight and is ghosting me and her sister because we're trying to help. But dear lord, this is far beyond me. I cannot comprehend what I'm even supposed to do right now. Kim's lost her mind. Is there any chance I will be happily married to this? A woman who went and got a face tattoo and hid the fact because she knew that we would talk her out of it? Story time about when I messed up by inviting a girl over. This mess up started on Saturday and it's Thursday now. I matched with a girl on Facebook dating and she was very cute. I didn't notice that she only smiled with her top row of teeth in pictures and figured that her bottom teeth might be effed up, but didn't think much of it. She had trad wife energy and I was into it. We end up meeting on Sunday after some pretty clean chatting. Turns out that she lives exactly 8 minutes from me, so I offered to pick her up for our first date. I learned a lot about her in a very short time. I won't reveal all the details, but she had battled a long time with eating disorders, thus her teeth being a bit janky. From what I saw, they weren't that bad. This is all a red herring. Nothing about this has to do anything with teeth. I wanted to mention it because I was so focused on that that I didn't pick up on the other red flags. I also found out that she doesn't drink all that often and only at meal times if it's appropriate. How nice. She also lives with her parents. Why? She has a surgery coming up and is involving a lot of physical therapy. I piece together that it's probably due to her aforementioned eating disorders and a complication thereof. Otherwise, great date. Fast forward to last night and this morning. I invite her over for dinner. The plan was her dad would drop her off because she doesn't have a car due to a recent wreck and I would drive her home later that evening. She also tells me that she's a felon like one hour before we hang out. Okay? Don't worry, it's just three DUIs and it's over with. Thanks for telling me? No, really, I should have paid attention to this red flag. She comes over and after pleasantries, I start to cook shrimp curry soup. She asks for a drink. I show her my drink cabinet and picks out the most expensive tequila that I have. That's fine. Biggest F up? I presume that everyone is good at self-regulation of their drinking. It's just what I believe. We know if we're getting toasted or not and it's intentional. I join and catch up with the two shots. I get a seltzer for myself and she grabs a cocktail. And another one. Four drinks in 40 minutes for this 110 pound person. I assume she's good at holding her liquor. After dinner, we're cuddling where she has her head on my lap. Suddenly, to my surprise, she takes her pants off and says, let's go to bed. A woman has needs. Let me mention nothing sexual happened here. I was barely registering as tipsy and she was beyond drunk. I set her in the bed and she immediately passes out. No worries, I'll put a trash can near her and I'll go watch some TV and play games and check on her. The horror story starts here. I check on her and I realize that my bed is dark. I touch it. It's pee. Just fucking great. I attempt to wake her and alert her that she soiled herself and my bed. She wakes up and asks me why I'm waking her up and then tries to flirt with me. I then notice she's soiling herself. Again actively while trying to seduce me. I somehow managed to get her to the bathroom and sit her on the toilet and have her drink water to sober up. This was a bad plan later. She refuses to use the toilet and I ease her down on the ground on my fuzzy bath mat. I drape her with a towel and place another beneath her, just in case. I then spend the next five hours until 4.30 in the morning washing my clothes, her clothes, my bedding, and my comforter. At some point, I sit on the couch where she was earlier and realize that she had soiled my couch. That's why she was so urgent to go to the bed. I check on her to make sure that she's okay and I end up changing her towel twice. I finally decide to go to sleep around 5 and I have work at 9, despite the ice storm. I set an alarm at 8 so I can drive her the hell home and forget it all happened. At 6.30, she wakes up, confused and naked, to which I provide her some of my gym clothes that I don't really care about. 
I go back to the couch and she's embarrassed and hungry. Fine, go eat leftovers, but let me sleep. She clings around in the kitchen a while. She apparently ate all the shrimp in the soup. Great. She decides to cuddle with me on the couch and I had no energy to push her away. She attempts to kiss me, but I rebuke it and then realize that she has gin on her breath. I spring up and go to the kitchen and realize that she drank another four ounces of gin at 7.30 in the morning. I run back to the bed and she's catatonic again. I start to freak out and see her phone. She told me her birthday on the first date and used that to open her phone. Voila. Turns out she has like nine missed calls from her parents, so I call them from her phone. I explain every single detail of the happenings of the night and they're mortified. I tell them that I have work and they need to come get her now. An hour later, her father shows up, which is ridiculous because he lives so close, but I was just happy that he was there. I had gathered her laundry, belongings, etc. to give it to her dad. Her dad is not happy. He yells at her and I tell him, hey, sorry, my house? Please, no yelling. He apologizes and agrees. Surprised that actually worked, but I guess he was embarrassed about everything? Dad takes his stuff and comes back and says, she was almost one week sober and this happens. Not your fault, son. The DUI thing makes sense now. She cannot stand up by herself. So he tries to scoop her up from the couch, but she's completely dead weight and wakes up, yelling that she hates her dad and pees on him and my couch. Again, we both end up dragging her to the car and my neighbors are watching, mortified of what seems like a kidnapping happening. Her mom just texted me to apologize a few hours later and that she would get me my clothes back. I'm really just upset that I'm sitting here eating my shrimpless soup.